This is the Ruby on Rails tutorial Rails installation screencast specialized for Microsoft Windows. Now I, I have to warn you before we even get started that I don't know a whole lot about this. I've never developed Rails applications under Windows. In fact, I've never developed software of any kind under Windows. But I do know how to type Windows Ruby on Rails installation at Google, and so I've been able to cobble together this uh, set of instructions to get you started on a Microsoft Windows Rails development environment. We'll start by installing a Linux-like environment for Windows. You can see where my biases lie. It's called SigWin, and I'm feeling lucky. Here it is, just install the setup file. And here it is. All of the defaults are fine. And we can pick any of these. You'll probably get this message. Don't worry about it. It says, if this is the first time you've installed Sigwin, you can ignore this message. It would be really cool if they could somehow detect that, but you can click OK. And here is the Sigwin setup package manager. Uh, we're going to install a, a bunch of different pieces of software to get going with this, uh, this Rails development environment. The first thing we're going to do is install an editor called Vim. There you go. We also need uh, the git version control system. Where is that git? Here it is. We want to use a program called curl. Oops. You may not need this actually, but it's, uh, it's good to have. This is a command line client for interacting with, uh, with programs over the internet. Include You can hit web pages and so on. It's really cool. Here it is, curl. Uh, we also need Ruby. So where is this? Under interpreters. Here it is. This will install version 1.8.7, which should be sufficient for this tutorial. Although the main tutorial uses Ruby 1.9.2, um, it's so easy to install using Sigwin that we're on the Windows setup, I'm just going to go with this version. And we also need some other one. We need SQLite. This is a, the database used by Rails uh, in, uh, in the local development environment. So SQLite 3. Let's uh, and let's just install all these. We also need GCC, which used to stand for the GNU C compiler, and now it stands for the GNU compiler collections. It can compile all kinds of software. So there we go, GCC. We'll also need make. Where is it? Here it is, make. And that should be good for now. Let's click Next, and uh, we'll install this thing. This will take a few minutes. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead, but you should not be alarmed if it uh, if it takes quite a while for this to install. Um, now that Sigwin is finished installing, we can just click on Finish. You can see that we've got an icon here on the desktop called Sigwin. This is something that will happen the first time uh, you start up Sigwin, but it won't happen again. And this is essentially a Linux style command line for uh, a Windows machine. Let's list the directory to see what's there. There's nothing there. And we're about to change that by installing Ruby Gems, which is the program that we need uh, in order to install uh, the Ruby packages called Gems. And uh, one of those packages is Rails itself. Here we go. Let's install Ruby Gems from source here. We're going to save it. And now here's Ruby Gems on my desktop, uh, but we need to put it in a place where Sigwin can find it. And so that means we need to navigate to the local disk Sigwin home. 
IE7. This is actually the Windows installation I used to test web pages in Internet Explorer 7. That's why it's called IE7. This is a Windows running on a Macintosh installing a Linux-like system. <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel like in Ghostbusters when they cross the streams, like I'm crossing the streams right here. We can type ls to make sure that it, it's there. There it is. And now we're going to use the tar command to uh, to un zip this archive. We're going to do tar, it's zipped, so we're going to do z, and then we're going to extract the file Ruby gems, rub tab, and if we ls, you can see that it's there now. cd into the directory, and at this point I'm going to, uh, to type ruby setup, actually let's ls, you can see one of these files over here is setup.rb. The way you install this ruby setup RB. Now, at this point, if you're running uh, Windows Vista or later, you might have to do some trickery in order to run this as some sort of administrator. There's uh, a movie reference in the current version of the Ruby on Rails tutorial book uh, that you can actually find on YouTube that tells you about this. But I'm running Windows XP here, and Ruby setup works fine in this context. All right, now I've installed Ruby Gems, and I'm already uh, ready to install Rails. The way to install Rails is with the gem command that comes with RubyGems, gem install Rails. Now we could hit return at this point and it will install the gem. Uh, and this is the general pattern for gem. It's gem install and then the name of the gem. And what it does by default is just install the latest version of whatever the gem is. And you might think that that's what you want, but experience shows that oftentimes new gems will introduce incompatibilities. And so just as a general practice in this tutorial, I'll always be fixing a particular version of the gem in order to eliminate that sort of incompatibility as a source of possible error. Uh, so in this case, we're going to install Rails version 3.0.0, so that's dash dash version 3.0.0. We can see that the installation worked by typing Rails dash V for version. And there we go, Rails 3.0.0. Now I should mention that the main tutorial uses Rails 3.0.0.rc, that's the release candidate. But the tutorial has been checked against Rails 3.0.0, and uh, so everything should work with this version of Rails. So don't be alarmed in the main tutorial if you see a slightly different version of Rails. And in any case, you should always check the Ruby on Rails tutorial book to see the latest version of Rails supported by the tutorial. Now, in order to give you a sense of how to get started developing Rails applications on Windows, I'm just going to make a little test app. So let's go to the temp directory and make the test app, Rails new test app. And now I'm just going to use Vim to open up one of the files. So let's look at app controllers, application controller, for example. So this is just one of the files that was uh, generated by the Rails command we just ran. Uh, we'll be covering this a lot more starting in the first lesson, but I just want to show you that you can use Vim to open up um, a file and edit it. Vim by itself, though, is not a particularly congenial Rails development environment, and you're going to want to customize Vim quite a bit if you end up using Vim for Rails development. Um, take a look at the Ruby on Rails tutorial book in the first chapter. There are some pointers to uh, Vim customization with Rails. Now, even though Rails 3 is still fairly new, there's already been an update. It turns out that Rails 3.0.0 has a security vulnerability that has been fixed in Rails 3.0.1. Now, this particular vulnerability, it turns out, doesn't affect any of the code in the Ruby on Rails tutorial, but it's better with uh, security concerns always to err on the side of caution. It also gives us an opportunity to see how to uninstall a gem. So let's take a look at this. So let's run gem list rails. Let's just see what we've got here. And there we go, we've got Rails 3.0.0, and so now I'm going to uninstall with gem uninstall. Gem uninstall Rails, and I do want to remove the executable, and there we go. So it's removed, and now I can install uh, Rails 3.0.1 with gem install Rails dash. Now remember, before we did dash dash version, there's a shortcut for that, it's just dash v, and then the version number. Okay, so it's file not found lib there. I'm not sure what that means, but let's just do rails-v to double check that we've got Rails installed. Ah, so this is an interesting problem. It said could not find Rails 
3.0.0 on any of the sources, try running bundle install. So this is the kind of thing you might run into. And this is uh, getting a little ahead of ourselves because of this update to Rails, but I'm going to open up the gem file. And you can see here that I've got Rails 3.0.0 in the gem file. And so I need to change that. Now it's going to uh, work, Rails 3.0.1. And anytime you update a gem like this, you should do a bundle install, just to be sure. Oh, and it worked right away. And uh, so now at this point, we're ready to move on to the rest of the tutorial.